please join us today aboard the Tudor while we go spade fishing near the Chesapeake Light Tower, which is about 14 miles off Virginia Beach, Virginia. Now, George Roper is the director of the Hampton Roads Maritime Training Center at Tidewater Community College. And that name, Tudor, is his wife, Jean's middle name. The Tudor is docked at the Virginia Beach Fishing Center in Rudy Inlet. Now, in addition to teaching courses leading to a six-passenger charter boat license or a 100-ton master's license, for those otherwise eligible, George also offers radar certification, which is required of all commercial vessels. Now, just getting ready for the trip is a relaxing experience. Now, the Tudor is a Tiffany-built sport fishing boat. Now, that waterfront is always scenic early in the morning. And, you know, it really is fun to simply come down to the dock and just get on the boat and go without doing all the preparations yourself. But once we lower the antenna to allow us to pass under the bridge, we can enjoy the view. Now that jetty on the left hand or port side was designed to make the entrance safer in rough seas, but it needs constant dredging to maintain a safe depth. This is truly a very busy harbor. Now those little black dots that you see on the surface are surfers. Now once we clear the jetty, we are immediately aware of the tremendous influence that commercial fishermen, merchant ships, and the United States Navy play in Hampton Roads. Now these are hovercraft, which are used all around the world to ferry passengers and to haul cargo. But as you're gonna hear in a minute or two, they are noisy. We don't do much talking when they're in the area and shouting doesn't help any at all. And these truly are unique watercraft. Now, as we approach the shipping channels, the first vessels we encounter is a NOAA Coast and Geodetic Survey ship that's checking the depth to constantly upgrade our navigational charts. And after that, we spot a Coast Guard buoy tender, which reconditions and repositions the buoys used to designate safe passage lanes for deep draft vessels. And the Coast Guard is constantly out there. You'd be surprised how many recreational anglers fail to give way to a Navy vessel this size if it's passing in a channel when the fish are biting. Common sense should just tell you, get out of Dodge when these big boys are around. Now this big boy would take over one mile to slow down, let alone to stop. Now just imagine the bow wake that he creates. But it's nothing compared to the bow wake of a tugboat or a nuclear sub. And these big vessels, they come into Hampton Roads harbors constantly, 24 hours a day. Just look at that bow wake he's putting out. And that's an empty ship. Now George usually just stops and gives way until those big boys have really passed. Now can you imagine what might have happened without rules of the road and bridge to bridge radio communications in a situation just like that? Now, I really don't have a clue how this Columbus-type vessel got into our area, but you never know what to expect. 
Now while George is getting us there, I'm getting us ready. Now we use very small hooks and barrel swivels for spade fishing. And the leader between the two is two feet long of about 20 pound monofilament line. Now these two hook and barrel swivel are tied together by an improved clinch knot. Once the barrel swivel is tied on, then we tie on the hook with the same type of knot. And this is what we're going to end up with to go spade fishing. This just looks like a real hot day. Look at that mist. Now George slows us down so we can figure out where we're going to anchor. You know, George promised me that we'd have that tower all to ourselves today. And I guess, well, maybe the check's in the mail. Now we need to set our anchor up current of the tower between some of the boats to be able to get our boats near the tower legs. And even while we're positioning, we're going to get excited when we see what's in the water all around us. Yes sir, look at that, the spade fish are here. My Varden, my Varden, come in James. Let me do. How do you know? Are we hung up? Are we anchored up? No. Well, out the anchor then. You must need to go a little bit ahead. Are we are we catching, Mark? You know, we frequently have to reset the anchor a couple of times to avoid messing up the other boats that are already in position. Now, Dr. John Bowman just netted a real nice spade fish, so we're getting anxious. Now that clove hitch means that the anchor is now tight. Thank you, Mark. And the fish are here. Look at that big amberjack going right through the middle of those. And you might know, the minute that the anchor is set, along comes a nuclear sub, which is gonna ruin the anchor set for half of these boats, just from that wake he puts up. Now fresh clams are the key. We don't crack them until we're ready to use them. Now they dry out too fast in this hot sun. Now when we're going spade fishing, we just need a real small piece of that yellow muscle to barely cover the hook point. That's way too big. A little bitty thing like this. For some reason, I thought we had two. <laughs> two, two hooks. Oh no. Now we got to bury the point. These are these are leader shy, so we may have to go to fluorocarbon leaders like Warren Four uses. And it's professed that those are the greatest things in the world. But actually, really the greatest thing in the world is to set the darn rod in the rod holder and let it do the work. Now 
of the boats all around us are catching. Spade fish are everywhere. It looks like I'm in the net, doesn't it? <laughs> Look what he's eating. He's eating jellyfish. We're gonna hang him. Hang him high. Oh, I got right. this one. Okay, you get the hook on. You gotta take some. Set it down on the floor. Right now that first fish always goes on a stringer overboard because it's going to attract a school. Now this Judas fish will swim right where we toss the chunks of bait and right near our chum pot and it's going to bring that school right to us. Now you never know Who's at home in the ocean? Now George wanted to use two hooks and he caught a sheep's head. I told him we only use one. Doggone, that sheep's head was there. That's awesome. Right into town. Oh, your citation sheep said is usual. That's what we came for, sheep said. Well, we really didn't. We came for spade fish. But since we caught this sheep said, just look at those front teeth. They're incisors. They are sharp. But don't be fooled by those. Look at those grinders behind them. Now this boat is fighting an amberjack right in the middle of that school of spade fish. Now Mark said, it looked like a lot of work when George did it, but he didn't come out there just to watch George catch fish. Keep coming, just bring your tip to me. Bring your tip to me. One more time. Yeah, that's much better. See how quick it is to come out when you get out of the sun? <laughs> So we can see the fish. Oh. We gotta show Richard all the fish all the fish we've got. Now chum buckets work really well if you continue to throw little chunks of chum into that area. Look at the fish right behind the chum pot. Hold on, look at that. I swear, this fish is this is bigger than a blue bottle. Yeah. Oh, George! Oh, oh wow! He's oh, coming, George! Oh, you got, got him. him! I got him! I got him! <laughs> now, when you get two or three fish hooked on at the same time, you're always going to get one of them fouled up in the net. So you got to end up swinging the rest of them into the boat. Got you, little devil. There's 
even without that underwater camera, these fish show up real well when they're feeding on that chumpa. fish is hooked, it immediately goes from its vertical swimming position to horizontal to present a much larger surface to pull up against the column of water. This is exactly what's happening. Now when you use a chum pot of some type, the spade fish really are attracted to it. And it's important to study what's going on and what's doing it. And an underwater camera really helps us. Now just watch as the up and down motion of wave action on the boat moves the chum inside the container and slowly releases bait particles. Even small pieces that get stuck in the screen mesh will attract these spade fish because they got excellent vision. Now, when we dropped a handful of chum right in the area of our camera. These fish just proved that they certainly are not camera shy. Just look at them come right up and look at themselves in the camera. Man, maybe they just wanted to get in the picture. And we're surprised to find that even spade fish are attracted and can be caught by our optic eye jigging spoon. But we really need, did need to look at that. Isn't that awesome? But well, we really needed some small hooks to catch that on a jiggy spoon. So this shot. boat is the Black Magic, and it was just behind us using a fly rod with great success. Now, when we first showed you how to catch spade fish around, oh, 1992, we really didn't use a float or a bobber. But when we use a bobber, we could put the rod in the rod holder and just watch the action until that rod was bent double. And we showed you before that once the fish is hooked, that spade fish turns horizontal to increase the surface resistance. Which is this? Is this a male or is it a female? Why doesn't it have stripes? Why is it gray and not black or brown? Maybe in a few years I can answer some of those questions about their lifestyle. Meanwhile, when that black magic started catching spade fish on a fly rod, I wanted one. We just caught one on an optic eye spoon. And I wanted to catch one on a fly rod. Now my resident fly rod specialist, Dr. Warren Four, he can do that a lot. 
But this was my first one. Bent hook. Actually, it looks more like a, you know, it looks like a bobby pin right now. It's been bent so many times. But that's the way Warren likes them. He says he wants to give the fish a fair chance. You gotta do something to keep them away from the spear gunners. As you can see, when we hook up one, several others follow him right up. That's why that stringer is so deadly. Now, spade fish have seven vertical black stripes, which gradually fade when they reach somewhere between seven and eight pounds. Now, the largest recorded is about three foot long and weighed 20 pounds. Spade fish spawn in the Chesapeake Bay when that seawater temperature reaches 78 degrees. By August or September, they're about three inches long and they leave the bay in huge schools. And we can look for them around structure of all kinds. Another nice spade fish caught at the tower. We've only been doing this for about three or four years. But these fish are getting bigger every year. Now we got a limit, or we're just starting to have a limit of six fish per day per angler. And uh, maybe we need to do that, and maybe we don't. We'll find out in a few years. I don't know which line needs to cross. We're across the line. George, oh, you got, got him. him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call. I, I hope you enjoyed the quickest half hour on TV. Yeah.